the thing is, you know, as humans, as far back as we can find our stuff, we've always been doing some kind of thing, an image, a scratch. There's been a mark. So, you know, that says to me, like, it's right up there with hunting and gathering. It's part of our being. We're still doing it probably for, for very similar reasons. And uh, I think it's just an expression of our whole, whole being in the world. To make, uh, to make a living, art was never really a consideration. I grew up on the west coast of Canada and uh, at a time when there was lots of work. And what I used to do was just go to these uh, huge old sawmills, work construction with a company there, and it was very bizarre. That's where uh, the metal work, it was, it was really, uh, you know, like Charles Dickens, you know, like a sawmill with boards in it, beams six feet by four feet, and you're cutting them out and sparks are flying, and it's like, uh, it'd be a wood beam with chainsaws, but everything welded. Anyways, it was really, really interesting in one way. So that's what I did. Wherever I went, when I moved to Cape Breton, I got a job as a deckhand on a lobster boat. And I did that for 13 years to subsidize my artwork. When I make a sculpture, there's, in a broad speaking way, there's two approaches I take. I, I assemble, pile a bunch of stuff here and say, okay, man, you know, you're... In two hours, I want all this put together. So it's, it's to uh, use my unconscious brain, like not to think about it too much, to disconnect that way. The other approach that I take is to work, um, like I would like to maybe sit down and listen to some music and do uh, automatic drawing, like just let the pen be moved by the music. And every now and then, there's an interesting image in there that I think would, would work. And then it's kind of uh, ironic from that impulse, and I'll, I will make a big piece. You know, I will uh, start the process, and I will actually have an idea kind of where I want it to go. So I will take that material and make it do what I want it to do. Forging something I never did at the school, that's kind of all self-taught. And it's, it's really interesting to be able to move the metal, you know, and you can, uh, you can really, really get some uh, movement and tensions in space. And I think the visual is uh, more spontaneous. It's like you get it, you see it, it's real, it's there. And the thing with sculpture is it's very real, like you can walk right into it. I like the presence. It casts a shadow. It lives in our world. Coming to Cape Breton has been, yeah, a bit of a lucky landing, all right, because uh, it's just a beautiful place to live. So, and the lifestyle as a part-time work suits me as an artist, so I can go and work part-time and become part of the community that way, which is a very good way to fishing to uh, do that. And then there's the downtime where I uh, do my artwork, because you need a dedicated space to make things. You know, it's, you can't do it in the spare bedroom. So it's, uh, it's been great here. I've been able to, uh, to explore the metal part, and because metal is uh, such a cool, cool medium. Once you get some welding skills down and whatnot, suddenly it opens up this, this whole avenue of possibilities in uh, what you can actually achieve and do. And uh, as a byproduct of metal sculpture is making the tools to make the sculpture. You know, you can make tools to suit the job. And uh, it works for you. It's, uh, it's kind of fun. You know, like it's, it's a whole creative thing, the, the, the craft side of it. Like, how can I make this? work if I want to do that. So as I get older, I find I'm mechanizing so that I can try to uh, get, uh, get things done with less actual energy, because I have less actual energy, I suppose. But I don't like to think of it that way. I just, uh, it's a creative process, and uh, we're going with it.